In the last episode, Hashiba Hideyoshi was forced to rush back east, as in the aftermath of Oda Nobunaga's death, the traitor Akechi Mitsuhide was attempting to seize the country. The two would come to clash at Yamazaki, where Hideyoshi ultimately defeated Mitsuhide and destroyed the usurper's dreams of power. Now, as the dust begins to settle over the fractured and fragile remains of the Oda clan, Hideyoshi will come to conflict against another former ally and Oda general, Shibata Katsuie. Following the death of Oda Nobunaga, Tokugawa Ieyasu, a longtime ally to the Oda clan and lord over three rich provinces, was quick to muster a force in response to the traitor Akechi Mitsuhide. Just like Hashiba Hideyoshi, he too understood that whoever could defeat Mitsuhide would earn the coveted title of Oda Nobunaga's Avenger and gain all of the influence and fame that came with it. Yet as quickly as he amassed his army, he learned that Hideyoshi had already defeated Mitsuhide at Yamazaki. Although even with the traitor dealt with, the Oda clan was still in a state of chaos, and this turmoil also extended to the Oda vassals and lesser allies. Ieyasu realized there was still something to be gained in the aftermath of Nobunaga's death, but he was not alone. The mighty Hojo clan of Kanto, also hearing the news of Nobunaga's death, were already on the move in aims to expand their reach into former Oda-aligned territory. Thus, Ieyasu responded by immediately redirecting his forces into the province of Kai. He needed to move fast if he was to beat the Hojo in this new land grab they found themselves in. This new chaotic clash over the eastern provinces following the death of Nobunaga would come to be known as the Tensho Jingo Conflict. Ieyasu would initially prove successful, seizing Kai before the Hojo could, even doing so with little to no violence between the two clans. On the other hand, the Hojo were successful in their advance into Kotsuke, as the Oda-aligned Takigawa family was forced to flee from the province. It is even said that in their retreat, the Takigawa lord, Takigawa Kazumasu, was aided by Sanada Masayuki, who would escort Kazumasu back into friendly territory. Seizing advantage of the upheaval in Kotsuke, Masayuki quickly ordered his forces to retake Numata Castle, a fortress he had secured while in service to the Takeda some time ago, but was forced to relinquish after swearing his clan to the Oda. Although even after expanding his holdings, the Sanada clan was still somewhat small, the Sanada once again found themselves in a precarious position caught between three major powers, the Tokugawa, the Hojo, and the Uesugi. Initially, Masayuki would pledge himself to the Uesugi, but quickly he realized the changing balance of power in Shinano and would shift his allegiance to ally himself to the Hojo. In fact, Shinano was becoming a hotly contested province, situated between all three major powers. Initially, the Hojo would come to seize most of the territory, yet as the Tokugawa pushed up from the south, more minor families began to declare their support for Ieyasu. With the situation now quickly turning against the Hojo, Sanada Masayuki flipped sides once again and joined with the Tokugawa. With the conflict in Shinano effectively out of their hands, the Hojo would sue for peace between them and Ieyasu. Back in the capital, things were settling down after the death of Oda Nobunaga and the Battle of Yamazaki. For a time, stability had returned over the central Oda provinces. Almost one month after the incident at Honoji, which claimed the life of Nobunaga, Many remaining Oda vassals were to meet at the castle of Kyosu in a conference to discuss the future of the clan. Two topics needed to be addressed, one far more significant than the other. 
The first and far less important was to be the distribution and redistribution of territory following the ending of the war in the west and the destruction of the Akechi loyalists at Yamazaki. The second and far greater topic was the selection of an heir to the Oda clan, being that Mitsuhide's coup had succeeded in killing not only Nobunaga, but also his eldest son and heir, Oda Nobutada. It was unclear who should now inherit leadership of the Oda, the clan that had come to rule such a vast amount of territory and influence, a clan that had pushed for unification. At this point in time, the most important clan in all of Japan. Shibata Katsuie, a highly respected senior and veteran Oda leader, whose armies now commanded control over provinces to the northeast of the capital, argued in favor of Nobunaga's third son, Oda Nobutaka. Nobutaka had started to become a standout figure after his important role at the Battle of Yamazaki. Many were beginning to regard him as a natural leader. Although there were still others who were not swayed by this, and instead wished to see Nobunaga's second son, Oda Nobukatsu, take control, as Nobukatsu, through right of succession, should be the next in line. It was then that Hashiba Hideyoshi entered the room, interrupting the conversations. In his arms, he carried Oda Nobutada's infant son, Samboshi, Oda Nobunaga's grandson. Being that Nobutada was Nobunaga's eldest son, who was also now dead, Hideyoshi proposed that the position as head of the Oda clan should fall upon Nobutada's son, as would be proper succession. Hideyoshi had become highly regarded since he was the man who actually avenged the death of Nobunaga by defeating Mitsuhide at Yamazaki. Thus, quickly almost everyone's mind was won over by his method of thinking. This child, Samboshi, would come to be the heir. Later, when Samboshi would come of age, he would come to be known as Oda Hidenobu. However, even with an heir now chosen, the outcome of the conference would end up causing a whole new host of problems. For one, Nobunaga's still living sons, Nobukatsu and Nobutaka, were quickly becoming bitter rivals. Foolish men who would come to be influenced by other lords, wishing to expand their own power. But of course, the real tragedy of it all was that a new vein of tension was now quickly rising between Shibata Katsuie and Hashiba Hideyoshi. Katsuie could see through Hideyoshi's guise. He knew that because of Hideyoshi's newfound influence, he would control the child Samboshi for his own aims. He knew that Hideyoshi was now working to serve his own self-interests. He knew that in time, the power of the Oda would fade away, and that without a doubt, the power of the Hashiba would come to rise. This was what Katsuie was trying to prevent, had he been able to place Nobutaka in charge of the clan. With an adult and aspiring leader in charge, he would have been far less vulnerable to the effects of others trying to dominate him. The Oda would have lived on. We can also speculate that there may have been another cause for Katsuie's resentment towards Hideyoshi. Katsuie was a senior Oda commander and samurai born into his class, while Hideyoshi had been born a commoner. Katsuie had once commanded Hideyoshi when he was still an Ashigaru foot soldier, but had since been forced to watch his rise to samurai and eventually general. No doubt there may have been an element of bitterness in Katsuie that this man of low birth had not only been the one to avenge his lord, but also was now controlling the future of the clan. It was already apparent. Soon after the end of the conference at Kyosu, Hideyoshi had gone to work immediately building up his reputation in the capital establishing himself as a prominent leading figure. Hideyoshi knew that there would be an opposition that would at some point form against him. All he needed to do was strengthen his position and wait. Finally, by the coming of winter in 1582, his enemies began to link up. Shibata Katsuie, who had come to staunchly oppose Hideyoshi, would form an alliance with his chosen heir to the Oda family. Oda Nobutaka. 
This was cemented by the marriage of Nobunaga's sister, Nobutaka's aunt, Oichi, to Katsuye. If we remember back a number of years, Oichi had previously been married to Azai Nagamasa, who died fighting against Nobunaga. Now she was to be remarried to a loyal Oda supporter. With Katsuye's strong grip over the north, Nobutaka's control over Gifu and much of Mino, and other allies like Maeda Toshie and Takigawa Kazumasu joining in, the Shibata faction was becoming increasingly formidable, more than capable enough to take down Hideyoshi if they simply were able to work together in a coordinated manner. Unfortunately, we will soon come to see that their efforts would begin far more disjointed than what would have been desired. Foolishly, in late 1582, without proper organization or discussion, Nobutaka ordered the commencement of hostile military action against Hideyoshi from his seat in Gifu. Due to the fact that the mountain passes to the north had not yet melted from the winter, Katsuie was unable to aid him. Thus immediately, Hideyoshi fell upon Gifu and forced a quick surrender. In the ensuing negotiation, Hideyoshi would actually allow Nobutaka to remain in Gifu after he pledged his allegiance to Hideyoshi. However, as soon as the siege of Gifu was over and Hideyoshi was entering back into Kyoto, he was notified that Takigawa Kazumasu was mobilizing his forces from Nagashima and beginning a two-pronged campaign alongside Katsuie's son, Shibata Katsutoyo. Once again, Hideyoshi marched out from Kyoto and put down the threat, first dealing with Katsutoyo before marching on Kazumasu, who was now at Kameyama. Using mines, Hideyoshi blew apart the defenses of Kameyama and quickly forced another surrender. One by one, the opposition to his cause was snuffed out, and all that remained was the Shibata main bulk to the northeast. Finally, by the spring of 1583, with the melting of the winter snow, Katsuye was able to join the fray, although a fair portion of his would-be allies were now lost to him. In defense of the Shibata forces pouring down through Eichizen, Hideyoshi established a defensive network of mountaintop fortresses throughout northern Omi province, forming a line through the mountain passes that the Shibata armies would unfortunately need to fight their way through if they were to have any hope of entering the capital. With 20,000 men at his back, Shibata Katsuie came face to face with Hideyoshi's barrier, halting his advance. All was going as planned for Hideyoshi, as a decisive battle appeared on the horizon. All he needed to do was sit and wait for Katsuie to make his move against the fortress line. What came as a complete shock was when Hideyoshi was informed that Nobutaka had betrayed him and was now once again rallying in aims to aid the Shibata army. This was a serious threat to Hideyoshi's rear and a problem that needed to be dealt with immediately. Rushing back to Gifu to once again lay siege, Katsuie was made aware that Hideyoshi had pulled out. Quickly, Katsuie ordered an assault on the fortress line with a large detachment of soldiers under the command of Sakuma Morimasa. Wisely choosing to swing around Lake Yogo from the west, Morimasa seized the majority of the forts all along the western ridge which contained weaker garrisons. He did this while a force under the command of Maeda Toshie brought up the rear guard, capturing additional outposts and dealing with any lingering groups of hostile samurai. With this half of the defensive line secured, Shibata forces could attack the remaining forts from the west, far easier than attempting a frontal assault on them from the north. All that remained of the western garrisons was the fort of Shizugatake. With its fall and the capitulation of the isolated garrisons on the opposite ridge, the Shibata army could safely make its way through the mountain passes and barrel themselves into the scattered Hashiba forces. Victory was coming into Katsuie's grasp. The largest threat to Sakuma Morimasa's detachment was Hashiba Hidenaga, Hideyoshi's half-brother, who currently sat just across the valley with 15,000 men. Niwa Nagahide, another ally of Hideyoshi, was also nearby with an additional 2,000-man force. 
As time went on, the concern of a counterattack against Sakuma Morimasa began to weigh heavily upon Katsuie. By now, Morimasa was entrenched into his siege of Shizugatake, and when a messenger came to him with orders from Katsuie calling for him to fall back for the time being, Morimasa disobeyed and continued with his efforts, believing that Shizugatake would be his before night fell. Unfortunately, it did not as the defenders continued to hold out. Although to some degree there was a sense of security with him, Morimasa and Katsuie alike both knew that the main Hashiba army was currently deep into their new siege of Gifu and would be unable to return in time to aid Shizugatake. Yet it appears they had forgotten just how quickly Hideyoshi could move his men, just like he did when he rushed back to face Mitsuhide at Yamazaki. Currently, Hideyoshi was positioned at Ogaki Castle, while a force under the command of Ora Nobukatsu had been convinced to be the main group to lay siege to his brother Nobutaka at Gifu. In time, a messenger arrived to deliver the word of the situation at Shizugatake. At first, upon hearing of the fall of the western garrisons, Hideyoshi appeared greatly concerned. Yet when he asked if Morimasa had withdrawn for the night, the messenger informed him that Morimasa had indeed not, and that he was still entrenched around Shizugatake. It is recorded that upon hearing this news, Hideyoshi immediately perked up and exclaimed, Then I have already won! Hideyoshi now needed to rush his forces back to Shizugatake so that they could meet Morimasa before the garrison fell leaving 5,000 men under the command of Nobukatsu to continue the siege of Gifu. He gathered his remaining forces and doubled back north. In order to cover more ground quickly, he ordered his mounted units to ride ahead while the remainder of his army followed as fast as they could behind. Although this form of marching was not ideal and made his forces particularly vulnerable, it was a risk he needed to take. Arriving on the scene with 15,000 men and linking up with the forces under the command of Hidenaga, his army now outnumbered the Shibata forces laying siege to Shizugatake. However, even with lesser numbers, the army under the command of Morimasa was currently situated atop a ridgeline in their siege efforts. Thus, the attack coming from Hashiba soldiers would need to fight a hard uphill battle. As dawn began to break, Hideyoshi blew into a conch shell to signal the commencement of the attack. At his command, thousands of soldiers poured up the mountain paths to take the fight to the Shibata army at the top. This clash was particularly unusual for warfare in Japan. Although Japan is very mountainous, battles tended to always be fought in fields or valleys not atop mountains or ridges. Spear lines, firearms, and archery could not easily be utilized here. Instead, the clash consisted of sporadic melee engagements all along the wooded ridge. In this battle, many famous retainers of Hideyoshi made an appearance. Samurai such as Kato Kiyomasa, Fukushima Masanori, Ishida Mitsunari, and Toro Takatora. It is even said that many leading figures, including Kiyomasa and Masanori, abandoned the taking of heads, as soldiers under their command following behind would remove the heads from fallen enemies and tie them to branches of bamboo that were waved as the ferocious attack continued. In fact, over the course of the battle, seven high-ranking warriors would come to be remembered for displaying exemplary service, two of course being Kiyomasa and Masanori, but others such as Hirano Nagayasu, Kasuya Takanori, Katagiri Katsumoto, Kato Yoshiaki, and Wakizaka Yasuharu. These men would be forever immortalized as the Seven Spears of Shizugatake. In time, Hideyoshi's forces won the brutal and savage clash atop the ridge as Sakuma Morimasa's soldiers began a full retreat. Upon hearing of the devastating defeat, Katsuye fell back to his castle of Kita no Sho in Echizen, where he, his new wife Oichi, and other members of his family all killed themselves and burned the castle to the ground. Yet, not all who followed Shibata Katsuye would be put to death. 
as Maeda Toshie, another Oda veteran leader, would now be swayed into service by Hideyoshi. Back in Gifu, the siege would soon come to an end as Nobutaka fled for his life, only to finally commit seppuku in Owari. His death poem would curse Hideyoshi, reading, You had killed the one you had served. May the gods strike you down, Hashiba Hideyoshi. With the death of Nobutaka, the final opposition to Hideyoshi inside of the Oda clan was wiped out. Hideyoshi now stood essentially as the man in charge of everything. His work in the capital had also been time well spent, as in the aftermath of the Battle of Shizugatake, Hideyoshi's position would be elevated to that of Sangi, Imperial Advisor. However, even though he had won control of the Oda clan, he did not possess all the allies the Oda had once held under Nobunaga. In particular, Tokugawa Ieyasu, a man who had become a regional power to the east, who was independent of Hideyoshi's influence. So, what can we learn? After Oda Nobunaga's death at Honoji and the subsequent battle of Yamazaki, the situation in the east deteriorated as the Tokugawa, Hojo, Uesugi, and even the Sanada fought to claim territory creating what would be remembered as the Tensho Jingo conflict. Back in the capital, things were starting to settle down, as soon a conference was held in Kyosu to decide the fate of the Oda clan. It is here Hideyoshi, using his new influence earned from his victory at Yamazaki, would push for Nobunaga's grandson, Samboshi, to become the new heir to the clan. Although he would get his way, an opposition under Shibata Katsuie and Nobunaga's third son, Oda Nobutaka would form against him. Eventually, fighting would break out when Nobutaka attempted to bring down Hideyoshi. Yet he would be quickly dealt with without the aid of Katsuie, who was still stuck to the north. One by one, the opposition was crushed by Hideyoshi until finally the spring of 1583 arrived and Katsuie was able to march down against the Hashiba forces. Hideyoshi established a defensive network but would soon be called away to once again lay siege to Nobutaka at Gifu. This would allow Katsuie to bring down a significant portion of the mountaintop fortresses, although his forces would soon become vulnerable when they overextended themselves in their siege of Shizugatake, allowing Hideyoshi to rapidly return to deliver a crippling defeat. With this victory, Hashiba Hideyoshi was now the unquestionable ruler of the former Oda holdings. In the next episode, we will briefly turn away from the developing situation in central Japan to instead turn our eyes to the north for the first time in this series. It is here we will come to see the rise of Date Masamune. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.